We can't help but wonder about the places in our world entirely cut off from human civilization. These isolated locations, hidden away in some of the most remote corners of the planet, remain shrouded in mystery and intrigue. How far out are they? What secrets do they hold? And what would it be like to venture into these far-flung, seemingly inhospitable regions? Join us as we bring you 15 most isolated places on the planet where it is impossible to go. 1. Ilha de Queimada Grande If you're afraid of snakes, buckle up, because we will talk about a small island densely packed with venomous serpents that could give you the chills. Imagine being dropped off on an island filled with snakes. It's a nightmare for anyone with ophidiophobia. Even for those who don't have a full-blown phobia, it's natural to fear these slithering, reptilian, and sometimes venomous creatures that kill thousands of people every year. This small island that measures just 430,000 mo2 or 106 acres in size is so densely packed with snakes that it's enough to inspire ophidiophobia in anyone. But where is this place located? Ilha da Queimada Grande is a small island located off the coast of southeastern Brazil, and it's known for having several different terrains, including a small portion of the rainforest. The island is about 20 miles from the mainland coast, which is far enough that the snakes can't reach continental South America, and that's a relief to many people given the snakes' potent venom. Let's now discuss the snakes, who are the show's true stars. The deadliest snake in the Americas, the Fer de Lance, has a venomous cousin on Snake Island in Brazil. The Bothrops insularis, also called the Golden Lancehead Viper, lives on the island. This snake is particularly noteworthy since it can only be found on Snake Island and anywhere else on Earth. To protect people and snakes, the Brazilian government has barred access to the island. Only the Brazilian Navy is permitted to visit for lighthouse maintenance. Researchers given permission to visit the island must have licensed doctors with them due to the risk of coming into contact with poisonous snakes. Despite the government restrictions, there have been reports of biopirates who visit the island to acquire snakes for researchers and collectors. However, given the extreme danger posed by going to Snake Island, these reports may be overblown or false. In short, not only would someone face severe legal complications for going to this island without permission, but they might die. Therefore, observing the golden lance head from far away is best, such as through a computer screen. 2. The North Sentinel Island North Sentinel Island is a part of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, part of the Indian Territory. However, don't let that fool you into thinking it's accessible. The island is home to the Sentinelese people, who have chosen to live in voluntary isolation and have no interest in the rest of the world. In fact, the Indian government has strict laws in place to protect the islanders, and any travel to the island is strictly prohibited. The Sentinelese people have no idea about what's happening in the rest of the world. They've never heard of TikTok, COVID-19, or NFTs. It's a world we can't even begin to comprehend in our lifetime. In the late 19th century, the first ever attempt was made to get to know the tribe, which was disastrous for the Sentinelese. Despite several attempts to communicate with the islanders, all efforts were met with vicious attacks. However, in January 1991, the then director of the Anthropological Survey of India made the first peaceful contact with the Sentinelese people, but it didn't lead to anything fruitful. The island remains unexplored, and any attempts to enter are met with force. North Sentinel Island is considered a globally important bird area, but even flora and fauna remain unexplored. The islanders protect their land fiercely and have made it clear that they want to be left alone. Any attempts to enter their land are met with hostility, as seen in the tragic incidents in 2006 and 2018. 3. Tristan da Cunha The Tristan da Cunha is located 1 to 5 and 14 miles south of St. Helena Island in the South Atlantic Ocean, one of the world's most remote inhabited archipelagos. Tristan da Cunha is a collection of volcanic islands that provides a window into living in one of the world's most remote locations. Getting to Tristan da Cunha is no small feat. If you're coming from the United States, the most practical route involves a 15-hour flight to Cape Town, South Africa, followed by a six-day boat ride. You'll need to take a boat to reach this unique island, which is too rocky to have an airstrip. The island has a rich history, discovered in 1506, by a Portuguese admiral on his way to the Cape of Good Hope. 
The island was later established as a permanent settlement in 1816 by a British garrison under King George III. Today, the island is a British overseas territory, and its 242 inhabitants are mostly American, Dutch, English, Scottish, and Italian. The community on the island is tightly knit, with only seven surnames among the residents. But that's fine for the gene pool, as intermarriage and having children have not been an issue due to the variety of people who have stayed on the island over the years. Tristan da Cunha also has its own dialect of English, which is spoken by the fewest people in the world, according to the Map Nerd video. While the island has slow internet service, no phone network or local newspaper exists. However, there is a local gossip, which is said to be much faster than the internet, although only sometimes accurate. The island has two churches, one medical facility, and a five-classroom school for children aged 316. Medical professionals and priests may only visit for a few weeks or months. If you're considering visiting, note that the island has been closed to tourists since the COVID-19 pandemic. However, once the island has received a COVID-19 booster shot, it is expected to reopen for tourism, and visitors can secure a spot on one of the nine fishing vessel trips throughout the year. 4. Danakil Depression If you step into this extraterrestrial-like terrain, the first thing that strikes would strike you is the oppressive dry heat and the intense smell of sulfur and chlorine. But amidst this desolate landscape are patches of neon green and yellow that resemble oozing scrambled eggs. It's a strange sight indeed. The Danakil Depression is located in a remote northeast region of Ethiopia, aptly named Afar, near Eritrea. At about 100 meters below sea level, it is one of the lowest places on Earth. And with an average daily temperature of 34.4 degrees Celsius and only about 100 millimeters of rain each year, it is also one of the hottest places on our planet. This volcanic region is a salt desert at the crossroads of three tectonic plates on the East African Rift. Intense volcanic and hydrothermal activity occurs there, shaping the hottest place on the planet. In fact, it is often viewed as similar to Mars, making it an ideal place to research the physical and chemical limits of life on Earth. With more than 30 active and dormant volcanoes, the Danakil Depression is one of Earth's most unique geological regions. It's a strange and mysterious landscape with noxious hot springs, frozen black lava flows, and massive salt basins left over from ancient lakes. In stark contrast to the cool, temperate Ethiopian highlands, it is also one of Earth's lowest, driest, and hottest places. It's where the famous 3.2 million-year-old fossil hominid Lucy was discovered in 1974. 5. Mariana Treches The deepest parts of our oceans are known as the Hadal Zone and range between 6,000 and 11,000 meters deep. This region represents some of our planet's most active and diverse marine habitats, but it is also extremely challenging for researchers due to its technical difficulties. The Mariana Trench is the world's deepest oceanic trench. It is located in the Western Pacific, slightly east of the Mariana Islands close to Guam, and is home to the two lowest locations on Earth. Unique habitats surround the trench, including vents that spew forth liquid carbon dioxide and sulfur. Active mud volcanoes and marine life adapted to pressures 1,000 times greater than sea level. The Mariana Trench's southernmost section, the Challenger Deep, contains the deepest part of the ocean. It is challenging to gauge its depth from the surface. However, the Challenger Deep was estimated to be 10,994 meters deep, by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in 2010 using sound pulses sent across the ocean. The Mariana Trench also has the second deepest spot in the ocean. A harrowing 35 through 462 feet deep, the Serena Deep is located 200 kilometers east of Challenger Deep. The trench is 2542 km long, over five times the length of the Grand Canyon. In these hostile environments, recent scientific expeditions have found unexpectedly diversified life. The Mariana Trench's deepest regions are home to animals that can endure severe pressure and total darkness. Because there is a severe lack of food, certain microorganisms must survive on substances like methane or sulfur, while other organisms devour marine life that is lower on the food chain. 6. Certesy Island this fascinating piece of land emerged in 1963 after a massive volcanic eruption that lasted for three years. Since then, Circe has been a hub for scientific research and observations. So what is special about this place? 
Well, the primary focus of the research conducted on the island is to understand how an ecosystem forms from scratch without any human intervention. And believe it or not, only a couple of scientists are allowed on the island's premises, making it one of the most inaccessible places on the planet. Now let us tell you a fascinating story surrounding this mysterious island. It all started with a tomato. Yes, you heard it right. A tomato. Since the island is carefully monitored, only a small house accommodating a few scientists is allowed there. And before anyone enters the island, they need to be thoroughly searched because one of the main rules is not to bring any seeds. However, someone wasn't careful enough and ended up pooping on some lava. And guess what? A tomato plant sprouted up on the island, baffling the scientists. After some investigation, they realized that someone had unknowingly brought tomato seeds with them. But sadly, the plant had to be destroyed, as it would have disrupted the scientific research on the island. Fascinating. And this is just one of the many stories that make Surtsey Island so intriguing. 7. Heard and McDonald Islands in the southern Indian Ocean, about 4,000 km southwest of Perth and 2,000 km north of Australia's base at Davis Station in Antarctica, these two islands are definitely not your average tourist destination. In the mid-1850s, American sailor John Hurd discovered the largest island and promptly named it after himself. William MacDonald discovered the second largest island a year later and named it after himself. After a few decades, sealers moved to the island and almost wiped out the seal colony. Britain claimed the islands in 1910 and later transferred them to Australia in 1947. They are now an external territory of the Commonwealth of Australia and have been a World Heritage Site since 1997. Heard Island is the largest island and is 368 square kilometers. It is an active volcano covered with glaciers, with the highest point being Big Ben at 227.45 meters. That's 517 meters taller than Mount Kosciuszko, the highest mountain in mainland Australia. However, with several eruptions over the past two decades, it's not a place to take lightly. On the other hand, McDonald Island is much smaller at only 186 meters high, but it also has an active volcano. In fact, these islands are so volcanically active that they have doubled in area since 1980. Due to their remote location and harsh conditions, these islands are home to a variety of penguins, seabirds, and seals, but not people. If you want to visit, you must obtain a permit from the Australian Antarctic Division. Heard Island and the McDonald Islands are protected as a World Heritage Site and located within an IUCN 1A Strict Nature Reserve. This makes it difficult for humans to visit, but it's a great place for researchers to study the effects of climate change on a pristine and untouched environment. Untouched environment. Right. Javari Valley. Let's travel to Brazil's far west, where an immense swath of rainforest and rugged terrain lies, reachable only by snaking brown rivers. This is the Javari Valley, Brazil's second largest at 85,000 square km, nearly as big as Portugal, and is one of the last true bastions of primal wilderness in the Amazon and the world. But this region is also a lawless zone where criminals act with impunity and drug trafficking has exploded in the last decade. The Javari's tropical bounty has made it a hotspot for poachers, fishers, and illegal loggers, prompting violent conflicts between the indigenous inhabitants and the riverside communities. The Javari Valley provides shelter for uncontacted tribes despite the conflict and peril. There are about 6,000 indigenous residents there, representing 26 different ethnic groups, of which 19 live alone. Many are descended from those who managed to flee slaving raids and atrocities during the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th centuries. They took refuge in the harsh wilderness's remotest redoubts, home to numerous Amazon tributaries' headwaters. Two decades ago, Scott Wallace, author of The Unconquered, in search of the Amazon's last uncontacted tribes, visited the area because of the Javari Valley's unspoiled beauty. He went on an expedition with the renowned Brazilian explorer and indigenous rights advocate Sidney Pozuelo to find unexplored tribes. So, if you plan to visit this remote region, prepare for a thrilling and dangerous adventure. The Javari Valley is a place of contrasts, where the pristine wilderness meets violence and danger, and where uncontacted tribes coexist with drug traffickers and criminals. 9. Kero Sarisarinama. 
This is a table-topped mountain located in the remote Jawasarisarinama National Park in Venezuela, near the border with Brazil. The indigenous Yaquana Indians have a legend about an evil spirit living in caves up the mountain. Sometimes you can hear it devouring human flesh with a terrible sound. Sorry, sorry. That might sound scary, but it's just one of the many fascinating things about this inaccessible place. Unlike other tepuis, Chero Saresarinama is heavily wooded, with a lush forest covering its top. It's located in one of the country's most remote areas, with the closest road hundreds of miles away. This isolation has created a unique ecosystem home to numerous endemic species of plants and animals. But the most distinctive features of Cerro Sarisarinama are its gigantic sinkholes. There are four in total, with the largest one, Sima Humboldt, measuring up to 352 meters wide and 314 meters deep. That's huge! Sima Humboldt expands below to an even more massive 502 meters wide. The other well-known sinkhole, Sima Martel, is equally impressive at 248 meters deep. Both sinkholes are roughly circular and located just 700 meters away. The view of these gigantic holes from up in the air is stunning. Pilot Harry Gibson made the initial discovery of the sinkholes in 1961, but the first mission wasn't able to be planned until 1974. Multiple explorers and experts entered the sinkhole using ropes, but climbing out proved challenging. The ropes hang loosely because the sinkhole is getting wider as it descends. After several days, the team desperately attempted to cut giant trees to make an open space for the helicopter to land. Eventually, they used cable ladders to get out, but who knows how many rare species of plants were unnecessarily destroyed. The second expedition team arrived two years later and was more prepared than the first. This team discovered the third sinkhole, Cima de la Luvia, which was a quartzite cave. Cima de la Luvia remained the longest known quartzite cave in the world, measuring 1.35 km in length for two decades. 10. Mochuo County. This place is called Motuo and is remote and isolated, unlike anywhere else. It is located in eastern Tibet, and it's so inaccessible that it's the only county in China without a highway link to the outside world. Can you believe that? But that's not all. Motuo is also the last county where the Brahmaputra River crosses over in China before it flows to India. It's like the end of the road, the final frontier. And with a population of just 10,000 people, most of whom belong to the Menba and Luoba ethnic groups, this county is a world of its own. But why is Motuo so special? According to the Tibetan Buddhist scripture Bakagyur, Motuo is Tibet's purest and holiest region. It's even called the Hidden Lotus in Tibet. No wonder it's a spiritual haven for many. But there's more to Machuo than just spirituality. Did you know that you can enjoy tropical fruits like bananas and pineapples in the snow-capped mountains of Motuo? That's because it has a typical subtropical moist climate, which brings plenty of rainfall and spring-like days all year round. And with the Mochuo State Natural Reserve, home to numerous waterfalls, rivers, and diverse flora from tropical to cold-weather plants, Motuo has been dubbed the Natural Museum of Tibet, or the Tibetan Botanical Garden. If you're up for a challenge, you can trek to Motuo. But beware, the trek from Pai Village to Motuo takes four days, and the route is considered one of the most classic hiking routes in China. 11. The Pitkasim Islands the Pitcairn Islands are exactly the place most people think of when discussing a desert island. Huge volcanic formations jut out of the ocean, and there is almost no feasible place to dock a boat. These islands are so uninhabitable that only one Pitcairn Island is inhabited. With a landmass of just 18 square miles, it's one of the smallest inhabited islands on Earth. Today, 200 years after its establishment, Pitcairn Island has a population of just 55, and visitors are scarce. There is no airport, and docking challenges make reaching the island difficult for most vessels. However, for those who manage to journey, the island offers an adventurous and unforgettable experience with whale-watching and dark sky excursions. The island is also famous for its honey, which supposedly has a distinct flavor and it remains almost self-sufficient, much like the mutineers that landed there many years ago. In fact, Pitcairn Island is so self-sufficient that it has a school with just three residents, a health clinic, a post office, a store, and a few cultural buildings. Children are usually sent to overseas boarding schools in New Zealand to receive education beyond what is available on the island, 
and the only link to the outside world is a dual-purpose vessel called the MV Silver Supporter, which travels from the nearby islands of Tahiti and Mangareva to Pitcairn Island once a month. 12. Cape Melville Our next trip is to Cape Melville, a headland on the eastern coast of the Cape York Peninsula in Australia. The Cape Melville was once named Stony Cape by Lieutenant Charles Jeffries, but was later renamed after him as Cape Melville. This national park is home to several islands, including Pipon Island and Hales Island, part of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. However, what makes Cape Melville truly unique is its rugged mountain range, covered in millions of black granite boulders the size of cars and houses, piled hundreds of meters high. This field of boulders has prevented bushfires from affecting the area and kept moisture in, creating an isolated section of rainforest described as a lost world. In fact, several animal species have existed in this area for millions of years, completely isolated from other rainforests. Recently, scientists and filmmakers visited the misty rainforest atop the Melville Range, which had remained largely unexplored due to the massive boulder walls surrounding it. They discovered three new species of vertebrates that have adapted to a boulder-dwelling lifestyle, which suggests that an association with rocks was key to their long-term persistence in such a tiny area over millennia. And there's more to come. Several additional new species are currently being described, so the uniqueness of Cape Melville has yet to be fully revealed. Cape Melville is also an important cultural site for the traditional owners of Cape Melville, who identify as the Saltwater People, or Yithuwara, the islands contain some of Australia's most significant Aboriginal cultural sites, such as Stanley Island's spectacular rock imagery sites. 13. Cape York If you're a traveler who loves exploring remote and rugged places, then Cape York is definitely a destination you want to take advantage of. This breathtakingly beautiful peninsula is located in the far north of Queensland, Australia, and is home to some of the country's most rugged and inaccessible terrain. However, Cape York isn't just a wild and untamed wilderness. It also has a rich history of over 40,000 years. The Aboriginal people were the region's original inhabitants, living in harmony with the land for centuries. In fact, it's estimated that between 250,000 and 1 million people were living in the area when Europeans first made contact in the mid-1800s. Today, Cape York welcomes around 80,000 tourists every year, with many journeying to the top of the peninsula to see the tip of Cape York for themselves. Whether you're interested in exploring the rugged terrain, learning about the region's history, or simply soaking up the natural beauty of this remote corner, Cape York is definitely a destination worth adding to your bucket list. 14. Namulai Mountains this two 419-meter granite monolith may not have the iconic horizon line of some of the world's most famous mountains, but it is no less spectacular. In fact, it calls to mind an ancient fortress looming above the surrounding rainforest and grassland, with its lopsided summit often obscured by clouds. Mount Namali is considered sacred by the local Makua people, and is the source or partial source for several rivers, including the Lakungo and the Malema. While few travelers hike up the mountain, do more to the fact that so few visitors come here rather than any technical difficulties posed by the climb, it is important to respect local customs and sensibilities. The surrounding area is a traditional Renamo stronghold, and during the war the mountain was used by local communities as a refuge. Due to the mountain's unusually steep terrain, no one has been able to climb the Namalai to the top even today. 15. Sun Dung Cave Sundong is one of the most breathtaking destinations in Southeast Asia. Located in the heart of the Phong Na Ke Bang National Park in Vietnam, this cave is a true wonder of the natural world. In fact, more people have reached the top of Everest than those that have been in this cave. With its discovery in 1990 by a local farmer seeking shelter from a storm, Hang Sundong remained a mystery until 2008, when it was rediscovered by the same farmer, the cave is the largest ever discovered in terms of the size of its cross-section, stretching over 5 kilometers long and reaching heights of 200 meters. To put that in some perspective, you can fit a Boeing 737 plane in this cave. But reaching this natural wonder is a challenging feat. The journey to Hang Sun Dung involves two days of intense jungle trekking and river crossings, and once inside, hikers must abseil 
climb, crawl, and swim through underground rivers. But don't worry, you won't be alone. Each expedition is accompanied by two caving experts, three local guides, two chefs, two park rangers, and 20 porters to ensure everyone's safety and welfare. And once inside, the sights are truly breathtaking. Rare limestone cave pearls, the largest stalagmite ever found, and even a localized weather system awaits you. But only 10 customers per departure are permitted, and tours run once per week between February to August per year. Which of these places do you find worth visiting? Do well to share your thoughts in the comments section below.